Welcome back to the Timeless Tunisian Blanket. I'm your host Mikey. Today we are going to move along in the series. This is number three of four and what this is is that we're going to be applying a side border to each one of the panels. You see one and two. So there's two in there and we're not gonna worry about the tops at this time or the bottoms. So each one of these panels will be done like this whether it's the large one in the middle or the small ones it's all the same. So what I've done is that I've done my homework in advance and I have this already and I'm gonna show you how to apply the border. It is uh, or the edging really and basically it's four rows and once you see this you'll see that it was scrolling at one point. It's gonna be starting to open out and we're going to begin our journey. You're still gonna use the same crochet hook and you're just gonna choose the yarn. The color breakdown in the pattern is really quite good but I just did my own thing just based on spare yarn that I have here and so that's what I'm going to be continuing to do. So without further ado we're going to go with the panel border and what I'm about to show you you're going to do with all of your borders uh, or all of your panels on the side edging and also today we're going to be doing the joining of those as well. Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. I'm when you look at the edging just like you see here it's actually really quite simple. So you're gonna look at the right side facing up which is the good side. You'll see all of these beautiful picots and you're gonna be starting on an edge on here and you're gonna work your way across. Once you establish the first row everything else will align to each, to each other. Now if for example my stitches actually worked out because I did keep it on that checklist to make sure that I did it and um, everything works out but there's ways to cheat it just in case you have to. So just kinda go with the flow. And so once you do the one side you'll do the four rows and then you'll do the other side etc. Just continue to do the other way. Now you're going to notice is that once you get established you'll notice that the stepping is closer to the beginning. So you'll see that you'll step down in the yellow and then there's three stitches and then step down and etc. That's a long double crochet and when you do the next row you're going to step down the one before that and then do the next three and then step down and that's all it is. And so you do basically four rows like that. So we're going to begin and do row number one of the panel border. So let's begin and create a slip knot. I'm going to show you a standing single crochet because I like it better. Just use your afghan hook as a regular crochet hook because it's a seven millimeter which is a special size or whatever size that you did. If it, if it is a regular size that you did then you can just switch out your hook because it's just regular crochet at this point. So because seven millimeters is kind of odd I'm gonna continue to use that. So we just wanna kind of scroll it back and get the first side. So you'll notice that the sides look like regular stitch work up the side which is perfect and it looks like that on both sides. So start with the yarn already on the hook and going into the side there and what I'm doing is that I'm doing a standing single crochet instead. So just gonna wrap the yarn and pull through and when you pull that through you'll see two loops and then you're going to pull through the two. That's a standing single crochet. Leave the straggler down in there so that you can catch it. So the next one you see it's right there and they're very easy to see where the stitches are so you don't have to fight your way through this. So the next one's like that. Now we're going to step down. So we're gonna do a long double crochet and we're going to do a long one all the way. Just see one, two, three. Do you see this one? That's where you're gonna go. So when you do that you just look at that cross beam and then just scoop it up and then yarning over pulling it through. Give it a bit of slack and then yarn over pull through two and two and that takes you back to the top. That will count as the stitch that it's gonna sit in front of. So when you go to do the next three you have to make sure that you don't include that one that is sitting in front of. So it's one, two, three. So just do the next three as single crochets. I wouldn't say that this is hard at all. It's just a matter of you just gotta keep pay attention the first uh, pass across because you're establishing your drop downs with your long double crochets. So you got your three and now you're gonna drop down. So just look at to where you dropped before and just follow it along. So just kind of like do um, like battleship I guess. Mm -hmm. Following the, the X and Y and then do that one that counts as the one that's sitting in front of so then you do the next three. And what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna rely on you to go all the way across your panel in the same formation. Just remember there's always three single crochets that separate those long double crochets and I will show you what it looks like at the end of this. So again if you're not sure where to go just follow it down 
okay, one, two, three, and etc. So I'll be right back in a moment. So I'm continuing all the way across and I'm just continuing to follow the sequence of the stitching right until the very edge of the other side. Okay, and then I'm just gonna finish up so it counts as the one it's sitting in front of so I got the last two that are here. Now once you get to here, you're just going to finish off. So just snip your yarn. Now you'll see the color sequence available in the pattern if you would like to do it the same way. It looks really good. And what you need to do then is go back to here, the beginning, and preferably with a different color so you get the look. And we're going to start row number two. Okay, let's begin number two with the standing single crochet in the back loop only. So when you get the first one, it's the back loop. Okay, so don't go into both loops, just go into the back and do a standing single crochet there. So you're gonna use the back loops now going ahead for the rest of this, uh, the remaining border, or edge, the remaining rows that are left. So now you're going to drop down in the next one and see where you drop before, you're gonna drop one higher. Okay, so you're not going down as far as that yellow, you're gonna be one up. Okay, and that creates a stepping formation. And then you are gonna go and do the back loop of the next three. So it's exactly what you know, but now that you've established your counts already in the last row, you don't need to excessively count because you can trust yourself. And you just gotta trust that the stitch before the drop down is the stitch of the new drop down. See how this is pulling up? Don't let that confuse you on which one it is. So look where it's being pulled up from and identify the next one. If you don't want being pulled up so much, just when you go in, you can just clamp your finger down, just pull up some slack, and then just finish off your double crochet, and that will give it a little bit more uh, thing. Because I've already done it that way, I don't wanna change my method at this point. So I want you to continue all the way across, just with what you already know, dropping down before um, the last one that you see. that and then etc. So it's maybe at the end of the row, row two. So I want you to follow the sequence all the way to the other side. Okay and I'm following it and then just back looping the remaining that are left because I can't drop down any further before I get to the edge. And then what are you gonna do when you get to the edge? You're gonna fasten off. You weave in your tails when you're, whenever you feel like it lock it and then come back to the be beginning right here again and let's start a new row. This will be row number three. Let's begin row number three, the back loop standing single crochet. And you're gonna come in and follow the sequence as you know it. So let's do that. So we really cannot go down to catch anything until we get over here. There's nothing here because this is the edge. So you're just gonna back loop until you can see that you have to drop, which would be the one before this. So I'm trying to give you visual cues to reduce the counting for yourself. It makes it your life a lot easier. And so the next one here, it's before this one, so I'm gonna drop down here. And again, looking down, and this is where the line was, so now I'm gonna go one higher. So it creates that stepping motion that we see. Okay, and then you're gonna back loop then the next three. But I wouldn't worry about that so much. I'd just worry about watching the cues of what the yarn's telling you to do. Okay, so you're gonna drop down before this one. So please do this all the way across. This is row number three. So I'm continuing all the way to the edge. Okay, and I still can't drop down at this point because there's not enough stitches before I get to the end. Okay, but I am following the sequence just like you see. And let's get rid of this yarn and let's begin the fourth and final row. And then you have to do these all over on each one of the side of the panels. So let's do number four. So number four, you're going to join it with the back loop again. Okay. And I'm looking for my first cue and when I'm gonna drop. So, so back loop, standing single crochet. So I'm going to drop right before this yellow one here. And it's, there's only one stitch, but you see this drop in this one? There's only one stitch left. So that kind of fills things in. So I keep crocheting until I can see where that is. Okay, and it's right here. 
So this time you're going to drop into the yellow there. Okay, this there, that is the back loop and you're just, oh sorry, that's the front loop now of the yellow and you're just gonna come down into that one instead. So you're actually working into the border piece. Then you're gonna continue the next three. Okay, and then you drop again to the, again to the yellow and it's right in between the two. So I need you to do this all the way across and I'll be right back in a moment. So in the last row I just did my drop down. You'll notice that you'll have to do another drop down before the edge because you got one, two, and three and you got two stitches still left. So then you'll have to drop down and then you'll single crochet in the back loop of your last stitch. So this is going to conclude then how to do the borders for these panels. So you'll flip the uh, panel up the other way and you'll do the other side and then you'll end up with a double um, panel area. So you wanna do these with all your panels. So what I'm going to do next is that now that you know how to do this, you'll do this the same for every one of the panels and then I'm gonna show you how to join them with the slip stitch join uh, and that's gonna come up next. So let's begin to do that. So let's cover how to join them. If you wish to sew them together with the whip stitch, you can do that if you don't like doing this uh, slip stitch uh, single crochet um, area. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you how to do a slip stitch with your crochet hook. So the slip stitch with your crochet hook can be very tight so you wanna be very conscientious of that. What I'm recommending is that do not create uh, a slip knot before you do but create a long loop. And what you have to do is that you have to go into the back loop of this one here. Okay, and then you were gonna go into the back loop of this one. Okay, so look at it from this perspective and it's right on the edge. Okay, so they call them the inner loops as well and so you wanna go straight on down. You wanna always keep the same order so if you went into this panel first, this is always the second and then you're gonna put the loop on, pull it through and through and let the straggler or the loose end fall to the other side. You always wanna keep this strand coming from behind. So when I go into the next one, I go into the, the back loop of this one and I jump on over. Do you see where I have the yarn strand? It's here and I go into the back loop of this one and then I'm going to grab that yarn and pull through through and through the first. And what this is doing is called the slip stitch. So let me just get you in a little closer so you can see. So I'm gonna go into this one. I'm gonna jump over and get the inner loop on this one. See where the strand is? I wanna keep it in the middle. And it's always gonna be kinda coming from behind. It's like a sewing machine. And you wanna provide a little bit of slack because this can be really tight. So jump to that one and they're always in sequence and it will look really good as long as you keep the sequence going good. So always into the same side first and then the other. This is called the slip stitch join and you're gonna go all the way down your panel doing this and then when you're done that you then jump and then you start attaching the other panels. So I'd recommend just being really strategic about this because um, you know, it just, it's a lot easier to do it if you're, if you're putting the panels together in some kind of order. So start with your edge panel, then join to the next one and etc. And I will meet you at the end of the row in a moment. So I'm coming all the way to the other side. Your stitches should match each other in the counts if you were really um, good about making sure that each one of the, the rows that you did when you did this actually were checked off on your list. If not, like for example, say that you have an extra row, then what you can just do is that you can skip one of these back loops and you probably would barely be able to know just to get the sequence back into alignment if you're having a stitch issue, if you have an extra stitch or something. And uh, that's something you can always kind of work out and just kind of play. Um, this is at the point that um, it's not really gonna matter so much um, when it comes to uh, like putting this together. You just gotta make sure, you just gotta get yourself to the very top of where it is and then pull through. Okay, so 
that's it and then you're just gonna fasten off and you're going to join all your panels in the same way uh, and then in week number four the, the fourth part of the series we're gonna cover the final border and so this will come be what it will look like and what we just did here is going to be a relatively flat join and you see it looks actually pretty good. So I will see you next time in week number four as we continue the final border.